Harbor Freight sells a wide range of products, some pretty good and others not so good. Today we're going to take a close look at this equipment cable lock to see how secure it is. As you can see it's a rather large lock weighing in at just over 500 grams or one pound. Has a very thick steel shackle with a rubberized coating. The lock body itself is made up of a 1 8 inch thick steel tube covered in plastic and the keyway is protected by this rotating plastic bezel. The braided steel cable that's included is decent. It's not as thick as you see. It's actually a smaller braided steel cable within. In a minute I'll slide this back and you can see how it's crimped. As you can see by looking at the key, the core that's used for this lock is either a VA6 or an HU66. The key is used to manipulate wafers inside this lock. On the wafers there's very tiny tabs that engage the key and when they're in the correct position the core can rotate to open the lock. Even though many thieves would be deterred from trying to tamper with this lock, I'm going to show you how simple it is to pick this lock. And you will not need a pricey VA6 or HU66 leashy pick to do it. And right here's what it looks like underneath the yellow sleeve. Right here you can see that bezel. And take the key. And there you can see how thick the shackle is. If you look inside the openings where the shackle is inserted, you can see the thickness of that steel. It's roughly one eighth of an inch thick, or three and a half millimeters. You can see it down there as well. The one thing I don't like is that inside this steel tube that wraps all the way around is a plastic bushing on both sides. And the reason why I don't like it is because if a person takes a propane torch to this, they'll melt the outside, and more than likely all that plastic will melt. And when that plastic melts, over here, these locking tabs, you can see one right over here, another one over there. The good thing is that they're not spring-loaded, so you cannot shim this to open it or strike it with a mallet. But if this is heated high enough, the plastic can melt, and possibly these tabs that are locking the shackle in place can fall out of position, allowing the release of the shackle. Now let's take a quick look at the keyway. Now if you take a look at the key, you're going to see the end of the key has a bevel on it. The purpose of the bevel is when you insert it into the keyway, there's going to be some wafers that aren't perfectly lined up. And as a result, when you go to insert the key, if it did not have the bevel, it would jam up on the wafers. So the bevel gets the wafers into the correct position. And then when the key is inserted, you can see the tab over here and the tab over there. The wide part of the key that was milled out is going to scoop up these tabs and bring them towards the center of the key until they line up in the correct position, allowing the core to rotate. Knowing how this lock works makes it that much easier to pick. So in order to pick this lock, all I have to do is take control of each one of those wafers. And to do that, I could use a very thin piece of metal that's going to be inserted into the keyway. As it slides in, it's going to scoop up all of those tabs. You're going to see them all lined up when I insert it. And once it's inserted, I'll be able to jiggle or wiggle the clip back and forth and squeeze it. As I'm doing that, I'm going to apply light to moderate clockwise rotation on this core. And when everything falls into the correct position, the lock should open. Right here's the clip that I made out of a piece of brass, very thin. Ideally, you would want to use spring steel. It gives you a lot more control over the tabs connected to the wafers. You can see there's a bevel on this end on the inside helps to scoop up those tabs and the same on this side. See if I could do it with the camera in front of me. Very gently, you're gonna wiggle it in. It's easy without the camera. Okay, let me take a look at this with the camera now up close to make sure all of those pins are lined up. All of the tabs, there's four on the left, four on the right, are all within that clip. And when I squeeze the clip or wiggle it, I can easily manipulate the position of those wafers. All right, now just to show you that this is definitely locked, all right, and the clip is in the exact position you just saw on the inspection camera. I'm going to take this tension wrench, place it right in the center of the keyway. Of course, the camera is right in my face, so it's hard to see where I'm putting it. Once it's in, I'm going to apply just a little bit of clockwise rotation while manipulating the wafers. That shouldn't take long. Is that ridiculous, guys? What did that take? Five seconds? 
So if you're looking for pick resistance, this lock is definitely not for you. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out my lock related video playlist as well as my other video playlist. Rate thumbs up, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.